Hi folks and welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. If you follow the channel you may have seen this fly in my top 5 flies to try in September. It's the red ribbed hopper. So without further ado, let's get into it. The hook in the vise then is a Hanak H230 barbless hook. This one's at size 12 and it's on a medium wire in black nickel. The thread I'm going to be using today is the Nano Silk from Simplify. It's at 50D or 12 watt, and as you can see, it's a black thread. As always with the Nano Silks, I'm going to add a tiny spot of super glue to the shank of the hook, and I'm going to use my silk to spread that up and down the shank. Now, once I've done that, I'm going to catch in just behind the eye. And I'm going to use my rat's tail as a guide to bring my silk all the way down to approximately where a barb would be on a barbed hook. And then I can grab my snips and remove the rat's tail. Now the red rib I'm using, and there's all lots of different types. This one's a mirror tinsel uh, from Simplify, 0.8 millimetres. And as you can see, it's just a plain tinsel. Now, I already have a piece that I've been working away with. September's coming. I've tied a few of these up. And I'm going to catch this in just at the tail end. Just to cure that in. Nice and tight. And I'm going to bring my thread down an extra wrap. So I'm quite far back on the shank. And size 12 is uh, probably my favourite size of hook for this fly. Now you can use lots of different things for the body. Um, there's African goat, uh, possum works quite well. But I've got some seals fur here that's been dyed a black claret. And this is from Cook's, Cook's Hill Fly Tying. I've already got a little bit of the packet. Now it's quite a coarse material as you can see here. And to help me with the dubbing process, I'm just going to add a little bit of wax to my thread. And you don't want to put too much of the seals fur onto your thread. So I'd rather put on a little bit and add to it than put on too much and have to try and pick this off the thread because you are dubbing it quite hard down with your fingers. And it can be difficult to, to pick that out. So I'm going to bring that over the body. And I think if I play my cards right, I might have just put enough on. And I'm fairly happy with that. Now, you'll notice that I've left quite a lot of room up here. Because I'm going to put quite a big hackle in at the front. Now this uh, rib that I've, I've tied in, it is quite robust. But... What I want to do is add a little bit of super glue to the underneath just to make it not bulletproof but just a little last a little longer when I start catching fish. Now, this is the beauty of tying your own flies. Although the commercially tied flies that you can buy nowadays are generally very good, um, things like this um, don't happen in mass production. That's why when you're making your own flies, you know that you're going to get something that's going to last you a fish or two, for sure. So I'm going to catch that in. I've got three turns, which is perfect for what I want for a size 12. I rarely do more than three. Then I can come in and just remove my waist. Now, before I go on, I'm going to add a little bit more wax to my thread. And I'm just going to rub that up and down with my fingers. I don't want excess wax. I want enough as to make sure I get a good grip. Because the next thing I want to do is tie in my legs. But before we do that, I'm going to come in with my dubbing brush. And just try and pull out some of that seals for. It doesn't have to be a lot, but I do like them quite scruffy. I just think they work a bit better. 
Now to tie in the legs, I'm going to invert the vise. And if you're idle, and I'm certainly that nowadays, or your eyes don't work, in fact, I'll tick both them boxes. Uh, you can buy these now pre-tied legs. They come on the stock and everything. Now I've separated out um, three each side. Now, don't be worried, or overly worried, should I say, about the number of legs you're tying in. The trout don't really care. It's the impression you're after. So I've split them sort of three either side, and I'm going to go either side of the hook, pull them together, and then get a couple of turns over the top and let it sit. Just see where it's sitting, and I'm happy enough with that length. So now I'm going to come down a little bit harder, and then I can lift that a couple of turns in front before I come in with my scissors and just remove my excess legs. I'll turn my vise back to upright and the next thing I want to do is tie in my hackle. And what I'm using is the best cape I have available to me and it's a, it just happens to be a grizzle cape that's tied black, um, sorry, it dyed black and I've already selected a feather from that cape. Now you can buy various gadgets that will tell you the right size of feather for the right size of hook. I've never done that. I've always gone by sight. So I'll dress it up to the fly, see where I want my hackle to sort of start, and then I'm just going to strip away enough feather as to tie that in. So I'm just going to do this over my waist bin. Save clearing up the mess later. And then hopefully I've still got plenty of wax on my thread. And I'm going to capture that in. Nice and tight. And then give yourself some thread. Now what I like to do once I've got it in. And I've tied it with the bad side of the feather down onto the shank. Is break the stem. Don't break it off but break it so it pops out at a 90 degree angle from the shank of the hook. Now, with that, I'm going to attach my hackle pliers. Although this feather's off the quality that I could use my fingers, I just get a lot more control with the hackle pliers. Other, other tires may find it different, that they prefer to use their fingers. Uh, I like the hackle pliers. Every time I make a turn, I'm just sweeping back the hackle. Try to keep my, my fibres separate. I don't want them getting all entangled with each other. I'm using the whole feather. It needs to be quite bushy if I want it to survive on a reasonable ripple. So just keep fanning it out. And slowly, slowly but surely, you'll bring the hackle to the front of the fly. Like so. And I'm going to bring it right up to the eye. I want to pack as much of these hackles in as I can. And then when I've got to the eye, I'm going to bring it a couple of turns over. Just to secure that in place. And then I can let go with my hackle pliers. Now, what you'll notice at this point is I've got some stray fibres that have come forward. Don't worry about that. We're going to tidy that up with the tying of the head. Now, the way I like to do this is I lick my thumb and forefinger off my left hand and I sweep backwards and upwards. So, in I come, backwards and upwards. Don't worry about the, the couple of fibres that have sneaked forward there. I'll just come in again until I've caught them. And then I can concentrate on building my nice, neat head. Now, the reason for sweeping backwards and upwards will become apparent shortly shortly first of all i want to get safe by 
getting the thread finished off with a whip finish tool. Now you can do more than three turns, but that's all I required at this point, as I'd built quite a nice head. So I can then trim that away. Now, with because I've come backwards on the tag, that will now just pull away. And I've got a nice bushy hackle going on there. Now, I want this fly to sit in the surface film like that. So I want to really get rid of these hackles. If I was tying a pulling fly, I would I prefer the hackles down and I sometimes tie the legs in on top. But for a dry fly, which is this version of it, I want it to sit nice and neat on the surface film. I've made a bit of a hash of that. I'm going to have a second attempt, try not to cut the legs off. That would be a bit of a disaster. But there we go. So I've got my hackle, and what I do with all my dry flies mostly is I'll gink that up before it reaches the box. But before we get to that stage, I am going to finish off with a little touch of UV resin. Don't be overly worried if you don't have UV resin. Uh, you can do get the same effect with a little bit of super glue. But you may want to just put a feather through the eye after you've applied super glue. Because what you don't want to do is have to get your tweezers out when you're in a boat or you're on the bank trying to clear the eye. So just cure that off. Uh, the resin I'm using is Solaris Bone Dry. Uh, the label has long since parted company with the bottle, but it's definitely Solaris Bone Dry. And that's where you get that little brush from. And there we have the first fly for September, which is the Red Ribbed Hopper. I hope you got some tips out of that and I'll see you all next time.